Hi everybody, so here today I'm going to do an example of how to use Desmos to do a regression where you have two things connected. And it's really like three things connected. So I have my items that a company sells, I have the price that they sell for, and I have the cost that it costs the company to make them. So we are going to find the price equation, like the price demand equation, we're going to find the cost equation, we're going to find revenue, we're going to find break even, we're going to talk about profit. So lots of things going on in the same problem. But what's nice is you can grab all of this, go to Desmos and do it pretty simple. So I'm going to take these values for my items, for my price and my cost, and I'm just going to make a table in Desmos. So to do that, I want to start by adding a table. So hit the plus sign, you hit a table, and you put in your items. So my 10, 50, 100, 250. Then I add the price. The price is going down, right? We've talked about before that um, when price goes down, demand goes up. So we see as we're making more items, this price was dropping. And the last thing is cost. So what I want to do is use this table to also do cost. So I'm going to hit Y2. That way it's putting in the same X values but I have some more Y values, so I have 155, I have 174, I have 198, and I have 263. Okay, <clears throat> so right now it's graphing both of them. To kind of see them better, like, I'm going to turn off the Y2, so I only have the Y1, and I'm going to hit the zoom, so I can see these values. We'll come back to Y2 in a minute. They look linear, they look like they're decreasing, and um, I want to find the equation of that line. So I'm going to hit Y1, and then you have to hit the tilde. You can find it up under the escape. You can also go to the keyboard, and down at the bottom, there's this tilde, so that's what you want to hit for regression, and we're going to type AX1 plus B. You have to hit the X1 so it knows to pull from the table, just like the Y1. So you can see now that it gave us an equation. It says A is negative 0 0.0150907, B is 7.0593. Okay, if I was doing this, I'm going to like have to round, so I'm going to call it negative 0.015x um, plus 7.059. So I'm going to keep that for later. Um, we'll come back to it. So I'm going to turn this purple off for a minute. I'm going to turn the Y2s on so that we can talk about the cost, and I'm just going to turn this actually off also so it's not distracting. So to see the Y2s, I'm going to hit the zoom fit again, and now I can see these values for the cost. So just like I did Y1, I want to do Y2 is approximately. I don't want to use A and B again just because that A and B is tied to the Y1, so let's do C and D. I just don't want there to be confusion there. I do use X1 again because I'm still using those items. Um, and then let's hit D, make sure I have the right thing. Let's get rid of this so you can see. Okay. So again, I got an equation. The C is 0.448224 and the D is 1. Point, or sorry, 151.557. So we have two different lines going on, one for price and one for cost. I'm just going to write down for my cost, then I have 0.448x plus 155, oops, 151.557. Okay, so let's put those both on there just so you can check them out. You're not really seeing both of them at the same time because the price down here is so much lower. But let's pull back my paper. So the paper says, um, find a linear regression for the price, did it. Linear regression for the cost, we did it. But now I want to construct the revenue. It's important to remember when you're thinking revenue, revenue is price times quantity. So I'm going to take this P that I got in the first one, I'm going to multiply it by X, and that's going to give me my revenue function. So down here, I'm going to add, and I'll call it R of X, just so we're thinking it's revenue. It's going to be equal to X times, so I'm doing price times quantity, and I'm going to use the information I got from my first one. I had negative, I'm going to put the whole thing, 0 0.0150907X 
plus 7.0593. So we just did price times quantity, which gives you revenue. And then when I look over here, I'm just going to kind of move it around a little, you can see this is an x squared. We have x and x, so this revenue made a parabola, so it's upside down. That's good. That shows me revenue is going up and then it's going down. So we did that part. We have our um, price function, we have our revenue function, we have our cost function. This is how many items do we need to sell to break even? To find the break even point, we want to go back and look at the revenue function along with the cost function. So I have turned off the price. I don't need that right now, so I'm just going to unclick it to have less things. And what I'm looking for is this place where they intersect. Now, you'll see there are two points of intersection. There's this 24.269, and there's this one up here, 413.82. We want the first one. We want to know when do we change from losing money to finally we're going to make money once we pass this point. So this is 24.269. We'll go ahead and round it. Um, I'm going to round up and call it 25 just because at 24 we haven't broken even yet. We need to get to 25 before we've actually made that money. So that's like a, got to think about it, decide what you're going to do with the rounding and not always do traditionally rounding when you're thinking about business. You want to think if I go 24, I'm still losing money at 25. I finally pass that break even point. Then the last thing I talked about was find the price range for which the company will make a profit. So we're looking at when are we making a profit? Well, we're making a profit at the places where we've made from the break even. So from here to here. Over here, this shows revenue is underneath the cost. That's not a good thing. If your cost is higher than your revenue, you're not making any money. So from this first 24.269 over to the second one, 413.82, that's where you're making money. So interesting here to say, I already told you, I would take this 24.269, make it into a 25. This 14. 13.82, I'm going to keep it as 413. If I go to 414, I'm down here and I'm losing money. So I want to stick between 24 and 414. So what would we do? How would we find out what the price is at that point? We would have to go back to our original equation for price, this y1, and we would want to put in what happens. So we could say down here, <coughs> that we want to know A times 25 plus B because it knows A and B, right? It figured out A, it figured out B, so we can tell it what we want. So it says that price at 25 would be 668. And then the other one we said was um, 413, so I want to do A times 413 plus B. And it says, 0.83. So it's nice that those values are on there. That way you don't have to go back and make a new function. Everything is in there. Just remember which letters you're using and that should really help you out.